And so naturally you might wonder, well, how is it that IIB comes to understand what on earth is inside a message? And the answer is that it goes through something called message modeling. And message modeling, as it says here, is a way of predefining the message formats that are used by your applications. And I'll let you read the rest of this, but essentially, it, it, and you may come across message sets, which is really created by the older versions, the original container uh, for message models used by IIB. We're, we're really not going to use that very much ourselves, but it, it is, of course, very useful if you, if you need it. So the most important thing for our purposes is to uh, kind of understand this diagram here. And essentially, it's just telling you, okay, how does this work from an, imp from an import, how you're getting data into the system. And this is a nice way of telling you all of the major formats that IIB can deal with. And you might be wondering, okay, well, what is this DFDL? I mean, I know XML, I know what it is, but what, what is DFDL and what is WSDL? Well, we've already looked at WSDL a bit. It's the way that it's a schema defining sort of system for SOAP calls and part of web services. And in the case of, you know, if you have sample data, I mean, you want this to come through. And basically, IIB needs to know when you give it data, IIB needs to know what on earth is this thing and how do I look at it? And the important thing here is to understand DFDL. We're going to look at that right now. Well, it turns out that DFDL and MRM and XML NSC are all sort of related things. And the idea, let's start with MRM, in fact, because MRM is the predecessor of DFDL. And its purpose is to use a, a technique that uh, DFDL uses, we'll look at it in a second, that essentially just describes whatever you have, whatever your message is. And it does that by using a kind of XSD schema. You might be wondering, okay, well, what on earth is XSD? Well, XSD is a scheme, it's, a, it's an open standard modeling language from the W3C Commission, this is the World Wide Web Consortium, that was designed to model and validate XML documents. So in other words, if you have an XML document, imagine that you know, it's these messages are going back and forth through IIB. But what happens if a rogue message gets put on IIB? How would you know, or how would IIB know, that a particular message is a sort of rogue message? And the answer is that you can create an XSD, which essentially looks at your XML, it, it goes through everything that's in there, and then it will create a schema for the XML. And it's called an XSD. And this is good because by it's this kind of template. If a rogue XML message puts something else in the XML um, that wasn't expected, the XS, the IIB will read the XSD and say, whoa, 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 this is not your XSD says that you know whatever this is wasn't defined by your XML message. So that is XSD, and you can see XSD in in, in an example if you look here. So this is a message that came, in fact, from this XML file. So this is the original, this is the XML file, and you say, okay, well, this is an analysis request. This is actually what happens in CFM. And this is, in fact, the XML message that you put in the queue, one of the queues we'll talk about later, uh, that allows CFM to do some processing. So essentially, you put this queue, or this, sorry, this XML message on the queue, and then the question is, well, okay, what is an XSD that would be compatible with this? And the answer is this XSD below. And it's actually fairly straightforward because if you look, there is an element, as it says here, XSD element, there it is, an analysis request, and its name is analysis request. Sure enough, there it is. And then you have this XSD complex type, which is just saying that inside analysis request, you're going to have some sort of series of other elements, sub elements. And so it says, let's set that up as a complex type. And then you have this sequence. So the sequence is going to mention message data and then some other thing potentially and some other thing and some other thing, all the things being sub elements. And that's essentially what it's doing. So it's X, uh, XSD sequence element. Uh, here the element is message data. And sure enough, there is message data. It is indeed an element. 
and it has a reference of message data, as it says, right? And then it has a listing of the potential attributes. So, we, well, you know, you're looking at some of these potential attributes, right? Object ID and object type. Those are clearly attributes inside that element. And in fact, this is what you see under XSD element message data, because now what we've done, essentially done is we've left the kind of parent analysis request. And that's why, so that we've kind of left this area down here. And we've moved on to message data, so this new element down here. And that's where its attributes are described here. So this is an XSD file. And why did I have such a, a long uh, sort of... <laughs> diversion there. Well, it's because XSD is critical to understanding the DFDL that uh, we've been that we've been looking at. Let's go back to our DFDL and uh, MRM. So uh, again, MRM came first. MRM is the predecessor of DFDL. It uses similar techniques uh, for describing the structure of formatted data using a type of XSD schema, except that it can also model XML data. So it, we've been looking at XML, of course, but sometimes you have images, you have pictures, you have sound, and you have to model those model those as well. And MRM can do exactly that. Uh, the MRM format of data definition was only used in WebSphere Message Broker. Okay, so MRM came first, and then DFDL. So Data Format Description Language. Let's look at DFDL. It's an open standard XML-based language used to define the structure of formatted data in a way that is independent from the data format itself. The DFDL domain can be used to parse and write a wide variety of message formats, and it's primarily intended for non-XML message formats, pictures, audio, images, that sort of thing. WebSphere Message Broker, uh, and of course, remember, that's IIB, of course, provides tooling for modeling and testing DFDL data at design time. You can create a logical model of the message or import it from a file, test how it will be serialized into the into binary format, and test how binary data will be parsed into the logical model. Because of all these steps, uh, because all these steps are executed at design time and do not require the broker, the DFDL, development is easier and faster than using MRM. A DFDL is not intended to be used to model XML documents. And then, of course, there's something called XML NSC. And for our purposes, that just means you've got an XML message. The XML NSC parser can execute a validation of the message against the message model and optionally can cast all data from string representation to actual data type with, uh, from an XML schema. The XML NSC parser can be used both as a programmatic parser and as a descriptive parser. This is used when you create the XML schema for the message, deploy it to the broker, and select message validation in the message flow. So th this, is, this is critical stuff because it's essentially telling you uh, let's move back here so uh, you can see it. Here we go. Um, it's essentially telling you how you should set up your messages. In fact, there's a nice little table here that does a good job of, exp of doing exactly that. Uh, there is this, another thing, by the way, called SCA. I'll let you read about it here if you're interested. And uh, they're essentially based on different standards. Uh, the whole, and you can see here, the SOAP XML, if you have a SOAP XML message, you should use XML schema one. If you have a CSV, use a DFDL. And you'll see there's other uh, formats here as, as listed, uh, you can tell here. But, uh, and, and also I'd like to point out here that the XSD is an open standard, uh, as we talked about, and then DFD, DFDL is also an open standard, but they're just from different uh, they're from different organizations, essentially. So these things matter because if you're if you're going to be modeling your messages, and you are, there are a whole series of benefits that you get by modeling those messages. And here is a quick list of those benefits. So even if your messages are self-defining, and self-defining essentially just means uh, XML, you ca you can see uh, it's listed here. Self-defining element. It's an element or a message which uh, for which no matching definition exists in a message model, but which can be parsed without reference to a model. So, for example, a message that's coded in XML can be self-defining, and actually, in fact, it usually is. But the point here is that even if your messages are self-defining, even if you have XML and do not require modeling, message modeling has the following advantages. You can get runtime validation of your messages. Without a message model, the parser cannot check whether input and output messages have the correct structure and data values. You get enhanced parsing of the XML messages, uh, and I'll let you read through that. You get improved productivity when writing eSQL or eSQL, and you get drag and drop operations on message maps, so you, you certainly want that. That's that's uh, very nice. Uh, you get 
reuse of message models in whole or in part by creating additional messages that are based on existing messages. You get generation of documentation, so you can automatically generate HTML documentation based on your messages, and you get provision of version control and access control for message models. And in other words, to make full use of the facilities that are offered by IBM uh, Integration Bus, model your message formats.